Uh, it's being reported that there is potentially UCLA head coach Chip Kelly could be heading back to the NFL and being the OC of the Seattle Seahawks. We talked about this the other night, but your thoughts on this potentially being a move for Seattle? Yeah, my, my main takeaway from this is that this is all actually th – there's real smoke to this. Um, I think that what we talked about is that he expressed interest, but nothing had really come through. My thoughts still remain the same. The guy clearly doesn't give a shit. He clearly has no effort or desire to move this UCLA program forward. Regardless of what we've talked about with burnout and these coaches jumping to the next level because they don't want to be a part of the college game anymore, it's inexcusable. It's pathetic. I was defending Chip Kelly at one point, and I'm embarrassed that I did so now that we know that this is serious. I feel like he's going to end up taking this job. Why are you raising your hand? Because didn't I tell you that they should fire him? I think you said the same exact thing on Monday when we were <laughs> I did. or was it I, Sunday? I did. Joe, he, he's made it clear that he does not want to be there. Like over and over and over again. And I, I'm just going to tell you, this has been a little bit of Chip Kelly's uh, MO to some extent. Couldn't win the national title at Oregon, so he leaves. Okay. Can't d get things done, okay, at UCLA and leaves. He's a runner. And yeah. nothing. there's nothing He's wrong with star. that. Well, not you know, not really. It's song, but it's a song reference. <laughs> I, I know that, but I, I mean, <laughs> it just every time it feels like he hits real adversity, he doesn't want to bite down on the mouthpiece and get after it. I, I mean, that's just how I feel. He can blame the the state of college football all he wants to, but the day that he signed Dante Moore showed me that there are people around UCLA and boosters that will pay. It, he bit his own self in the foot here. Okay. He shot himself in the own foot, his own foot. You can't tell me, Joe, that they won't do things for him when you're going and getting one of the top quarterbacks in the country. And then you, I hear from everybody around me that a quarterback out of high school is worth a million dollars. So I'm like, Oh, uh, 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 okay. Well, so here's one of the thing that kind of confuses me, though, in the whole, you know, the lapse of all this that's going on. Why couldn't they have they afford to to counter the offer made by USC if they had all this money to go and keep or to go and get Dante Moore? They weren't going to be able to keep him because that was all a you know a, just him not vibing with being there and and whatnot not vibing with the system. But why couldn't they have kept Lynn? What, what was what? It's just so confusing with the consistency of the entire situation well, coach, and why I, I have no I patience for coaches, it. Coaches know, okay, and coaches talk, and I would assume that Lynn has an agent and potentially his agent telling him, hey, look, Chip's wanting to go back into the NFL, man. Like, he wants to go. You need to get the hell up out of Dodge. That the, Coaches talk all the time, and that could easily be a reason. And I do think that things, believe it or not, are a little bit more sustainable, okay, are you, are you ordering some Popeye's I, chicken here? I, it's, it's it's like I'm with like at the hack convention with the amount of people who are walking behind me trying to have a conversation with me while I'm doing a live show. My my camera disconnecting. I love it. It's all it's all great. Sorry, okay. to your point, Blake. <laughs> all right. Well, I, I I just feel like that Chip Kelly is if he gets offered, he's going to take it. And what's sad yeah. is, Joe, what happens? Because they have players at UCLA have 30 days to enter the portal. The new head coach could come in there and half his roster be gone. Well, there's not really much left in all seriousness. There's really not a lot left with this current roster for um, them to get plucked and pulled from. It, it feels like most of the top guys are moving on to the NFL right now. But to your point, whoever steps in and takes this job, it is going to be a bare bones roster. It's going to be terrible. Oh, poor UCLA, man. This is what sucks. Nobody's I ever said bad. poor UCLA before in a statement, by the way. <laughs> well, I feel bad for them. They got them. plenty going for them. They got plenty going for them. <laughs> like what? <laughs> I I mean, the alum, I don't, I don't have sympathy much for the alumni because most of them end up, you know, graduating and getting high-paying corporate jobs in Los Angeles. So th they'll be fine. They'll be okay. <laughs> I no, they won't because it's going to be tough to build back. And, Joe, 
it's not like they're trying to build back in the Pac-12. They're having to do it in the Big Ten. And, and I think that could be another reason why Chip Kelly doesn't want to do this because he looks at all this and says, hey, man, I got to go to the Big Ten and could potentially uh, be harmful to my legacy and to right. what I've built. And so I might as well uh, uh, dip now. So we'll see well, on Chip. Well, one thing to add to this, though, really quickly before we transition that we haven't really talked about, this has to be an extremely undesirable job for whoever they pursue. It's late in the process. Signing day is behind us. I don't know since National Signing Day, the, the final one has passed, how many kids they ended up with. But it is a bare-bones, small recruiting class that I think it was 10 kids the last time that we checked. They didn't bring in enough quality transfer portal players. Whoever is taking this on is taking on a massive rebuild in a new conference. It could be a shit show. It, it, that's why I'm saying I feel bad for them. And, yes, it is 10. They were 59th in the country. Um, they got some talent. I mean, they got one four-star in their class. Carson Gordon, also the quarterback from Episcopal in Texas, uh, also went there. Uh, but they did get some transfers. And um, so, look, we'll see. Actually, two Notre Dame transfers, Joe. Uh, Cormody and Henderson both went to UCLA. They're, they're backups. They're backups. They were highly recruited kids, and I'm not – I don't like doing the bit of – Oh, this guy was a bust. He didn't get onto the field like all the USC fans did uh, when we talked about those players. But th I, those guys are haven't really proven much. You know, they they were kind of the bottom of the the last recruiting class, so they could either step in and be well, decent players for UCLA. Play now. They're going to have to exactly. play now. Buddy. So exactly, they don't really have a choice. Be interesting to see if Chip Kelly leaves. When do you think a decision's made on that? I would imagine this week. I. So to, to also bring up, I told you earlier, yesterday was the, you know, the media party for everyone that has a media availability here at Radio Row. And actually, you'd be surprised how many people were talking about this. There, there were a lot of people um, that, that were discussing this. And Ben Solak was the one who put it out. I don't know if he was at the media party, but it felt like the second that he tweeted it, a lot of people were discussing it. So it seems like one of those things that is, I would bet by Tuesday, it, next Tuesday could come through. Well, and it's amplified because you're around a whole bunch of NFL guys too, right? And it's a big splash hire, yes. it's a big name hire, yeah. so um, it's going to definitely be talked about at the Super Bowl. But let me ask you this: speaking of the, speaking of a couple of guys either coming from the NFL or going to the NFL, what was the what's been the best part of your week at the Super Bowl? Oh, I haven't had one. <laughs> this has been you want a real answer. This has been nothing but stressful, Blake. <laughs> the internet doesn't work. Uh, I'm trying to chase uh, people to tape things that we've got deadlines for. It's uh, it, it's brutal. But no, in all seriousness, it's kind of cool to like, uh, like Jalen Hyatt was over at our table. Jalen Smith was over here being a Notre Dame fan. Getting to see him was, um, you know, it was pretty cool and whatnot. But it's, it's just Gio's cool. Like we've got behind you too. Uh, believe host. Um, yeah, believe Cam host. Newton's whole setup was was right over by us. Uh, and we could hear him and Shannon Sharp doing a whole, you know, their whole interview. Cam Newton also interviewed, I don't know what they're called, but there's this dance crew that they wear like masks and they don't talk. So I literally watched Cam Newton interview two guys that didn't speak the whole time. It had to have been one of the That's most strangest. That, they were dancing. Cam Newton was dancing. It was hilarious. <laughs> what kind of hat did Cam Newton wear? Uh, the It was a black. That was, I texted somebody that where he was. That was the first question they asked me. He was wearing the black fedora. Um, with with like it, it was a nice hat that he was wearing. A couple okay. guys on his crew had fedoras on too. Well, you're not cool unless you have a fedora, I guess. I, I right. might need to get one for tomorrow. <laughs> you do.